Hi guys, good morning. Happy Monday. It's Rita Free Cards here from Picked and Polished in Alexandria, New Hampshire. Um, I hope that you can see this. If you're um, tuning in, let me know. Say hi. I'm just going to check my Wi-Fi and make sure that it's turned off. Let me know where you're watching from. For some reason. Let me know if you can see me. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for tuning in. So, um, can you see me okay, Lynn, before I get going on my spiel today about decoupaging? Um, I just want to make sure you guys can see me okay. I can't believe I have my wood stove on um, going in my shop right now, you guys. It's so chilly here in New Hampshire. Hi, Alice from Toronto. Thanks for tuning in. At any point if this um, video gets weird or funky or blurry, let me know. Um, so today we're going to learn about, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to decoupage um, tissue paper onto the side of drawers or really any flat surface. You could even um, do it on wood if you wanted to make signs with like a really cool, fun, colorful pattern background. Um, yeah, it's chilly here, Lynn. It's, um, I've got my doors closed and my, this is the first time I've used my fireplace this um, season. So. Um, so, behind me I have the rainbow dresser that I've been doing lives with and I'm getting close to finishing it up. Um, I've still got some detail work to do. I've got to do one more coat on top and then do some more silver um, top coat on that before I'm finished. But this dresser is for my daughter. It's super colorful and bright and fun. And so I wanted to add a little, um, something a little special on the sides. Hey Kim, how are you? Um, so I decided I was going to decoupage, but um, because it's my daughter's dresser, I can get away with um, doing something a little different on one side than the other. And I wanted to show you guys the difference. So when you decoupage um, tissue paper, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Gator Hide today because I feel like it works way better than any other medium. Thanks, Kat. Um, I feel like it is sometimes when you use Mod Podge and you get it wet or something, it reactivates the stickiness. And when I'm using the Gator Hide, that doesn't happen. So, um, so today I'm going to be using the Gator Hide, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this on your own um, pieces at home. Again, you don't have to do this on the side of a drawer. You could do this on a piece of wood and make a sign. You could do this on the front of a drawer on a dresser. The same thing would, um, the same rules would apply. Um, thank you, Lynn. That's so nice of you to say. So I'm just going to show you guys. I wanted to show you though what a drawer or what wood looks like. So if you paint the surface and then decoupage something over it, it looks different than if you leave it as wood. So this is the paper I use. Okay, and this is what the paper looks like when I decoupage it over just wood. And I didn't try to get like a super, like there are some definitely some, um, yeah, you can use Dixie Belle flat too, actually, especially if you're doing like the front of a dresser, that might be good. Um, so you can see there are a couple little wrinkles, and that's going to happen for the most part when you use tissue paper because it's so thin. Um, but I just like the way it looks. Um, it, it is nice and thin, so even though you have to be careful with it, it just um, kind of goes on seamlessly. Um, but you can see here, you can see that the wood grain is kind of showing through my tissue paper. So I didn't paint the surface before I put on the decoupage of the, um, of the paper. But on this side, I wanted to show you guys what happens when you paint the surface before you put on your um, tissue paper. So today, again, I'm going to be using Dixie Bell's um, Gator Hide. You can use any of their clear coats. The Gator Hide is super tough, though, so it will hold up when you're, you know, pulling the drawers in and out. So I painted the surface in a soft pink, and I'm just going to move my, oops, sorry, I'm going to move my camera down just a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, so you might not see my face, but that's okay. I can see what you guys are writing. So let me know if you have any questions. So I've pretty much just given my side of my drawer one coat of the soft pink. Hold this down a little bit. Let's see what I'm working with. And then I am going to put this piece, I've cut it to size, and I'm actually going to, um, 
Some people, I think, iron their paper, like they put a towel over it and iron it to get a really smooth result. But for this purpose, I'm just going to do it, I'm going to leave it with the creases in it. I'm okay with that. Um, and I'm going to make it so that this side, so the paper kind of curls over the edge. I really want you to see what the finished look looks like on this side versus just going over wood. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me know if you have questions. I'm Rita Freakot from Picked and Polished in Alexandria, New Hampshire. Thanks for tuning in today. So I'm going to start with cutting my tissue paper to size. I'm not as much worried about the back. This is actually the width of one side of the paper, so that worked out. It was really I only had to cut it once on one side um, because you're not going to be pulling it all the way out. If you wanted to cover the whole drawer, you definitely could. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just, I've got my data hide in this little container. I always shake it up before I use it. Hi, Heather. Yeah, let me know where you guys are watching from and let me know if you have any questions. I've got the link to the gator hide that's in my online shop in case you want to scoop some up. You can just click on the link above. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start with a generous amount of the gator hide on the side of the drawer. I'm going to try to make sure I don't miss any spots. And I want to work kind of quickly um, because it dries fast. So I don't want it to dry before I get a chance to put on my um, paper. I'm going to go ahead and get that going. You know, I don't want it like super thick so that it tears the paper, but I want enough on there so it gives, it's going to act as the glue almost. If you guys have never used Mod Podge before, it works very similarly. Um, and then I'm going to also put some on the top edge of the drawer and the inside edge because I really want the paper to stick on that side too. Okay, and I'm using a nice smooth brush. And then, I've got my socks on today. It's so cold out here. All right, and then I'm just going to, this is where it gets a little trickier. I'm going to go ahead and, it's almost like if you guys have ever cooked with um, phyllo dough. It's kind of like that. Heather Rose from India and I have family in Maryville and in Valpo, Heather. Such a small world, isn't it? You can also distress this. So usually I try to lay it down and kind of rub as I go. Make sure I keep it straight. So once it kind of sticks to the surface, it pretty much is going to stay where it, where it is. Um, you don't want to mess with it too much. So see how I'm just kind of gently letting that sit. You can use something with a straight edge too, but sometimes when I do that, it ends up tearing the tissue. So I'm just going to use my hand to just kind of smooth it out. Alright, so I've got a few wrinkles, but as you decoupage or mod podge or whatever you want to call it, as you, as you clear coat over the surface, they'll kind of smooth it out anyway. So... Oh, thanks, Josie. That's so nice of you to say. My husband and I actually built this together. He did all the major construction, and I did the finishing work. And we even put our little girls to work. They were, let's see, last year they were five and seven, and they helped us paint, and it was great. We're hoping we can get electricity hardwired in here this year. You know, you do a little bit at a time, I think. So now that I've got the surface of the, um, can you guys see that okay? The tissue down. You can see there are a couple little wrinkles and that's okay. They'll kind of work themselves out and it's not going to be absolutely perfectly smooth with this type of, this is just a packet of tissue paper I got at the dollar store. So now I'm just going to work in my gator hide right over the tissue. And you want to be careful not to rub too, too hard because remember it's a delicate surface that you're working on. And so that kind of smooths down the um, smooths down the tissue a little bit for you. You can just kind of put a little bit of pressure, but not like so much that you tear the paper. And this is a project, I mean, so you can use this technique on so many different things, you guys. You could just do this, you know, there's so much beautiful paper out there and it doesn't have to be expensive. And you could just find some paper that you love and that could be the inspiration for your um, 
like whenever you want to do a pop of color or um, or even just a little bit of pattern on something but you don't want to have to freehand or you don't want maybe too much pattern you there's so many beautiful paper papers out there you can use um, wrapping paper you can use I know spoon flowers a company that makes some beautiful paper with different patterns on it so so there you're just gonna kind of make sure it's all brushed over and it's so simple I almost feel like there should be more to it but there really isn't so then the most important thing is you just really need to let it um, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like you just need to kind of let it dry um, and yeah people have used people use posters and all kinds of stuff on the surfaces I feel like when you you're dealing with thicker um, I'm gonna move this a little bit. when you're dealing with thicker paper it seems like it's a little bit um, harder to make it look like it's part of the piece so that brings me to the point of distressing so if you do have something you want to decoupage under the surface of something and you want to make it look like it's been there forever you kind of have to use some blending techniques with paint to kind of soften the edges and um, frame it out a little bit and also distressing helps that too um, oh, thank you, Grace. That's so nice of you to say. Hi, Leslie. Floral napkins. Yes, thank you for saying that. So napkins, you guys. Go get a package of napkins at the Dollar Tree or anywhere, really. Marshalls has some beautiful ones. Um, and you just pull the layer apart so that you're just working with the thinnest top piece. And those make great um, paper for decoupage, too. Yes, um, they're easy to work with, just like the tissue is. Um, it's just like your, the possibilities of what you can do are endless. Think about, too, what if you just took, um, you know, canvases or pieces of wood and decoupaged them. They would make beautiful wall art for a nursery or a bedroom or even a dining room. Um, so there's just so many possibilities with this technique. So I wanted to share it because it is so quick and easy if you're someone who likes 